Okay, almost started the video without turning the microphone on and that would have been disastrous because it's late. But hello everyone, welcome to Ask Omanar episode 167. If you guys have a question you want to answer in next week's episode, leave it down in the comments section below. If you guys enjoy, hit that like button and let's get in to our first question from Wyatt. He says, who was the first person to do a Lego review on YouTube? So I don't think there's a clear cut answer to this and I'm sure I don't have the correct answer. I don't know how you would find the answer to this. It's just not something you can find. However, the earliest Lego review I know of is by my buddy Aaron on the channel Lego. Legomatic 9 from February 23rd, 2008. It's old, it's probably not good. From what I can tell though, he does have the infinity white background going, so for 2008, very, very solid start there. However, and it's pretty obvious that this is what Jang copied when he introduced the white background into his videos, which has become a staple for him. So whenever you think about Jang's white background, just know that Legomatic 9 did it first and he copied him. It's pretty obvious. But yeah, no, this is like the earliest Lego set review that I personally know of, although I'm sure there are earlier ones. A comment says, I like the part with all the pixels because that's just what it is. So yeah, pretty cool old review, but I don't, you know, I, there's not a clear answer to that. Okay, so I keep seeing this one, so I figured I'd answer it again, even though I think I already did. Matt says, uh, we still make a Sith Mosaic review because now there's no chance of you getting free ones. I bought four of them, like, months ago, months ago, um, and, uh... I just don't want to build them, and until I build them, there won't be a review, so... I just have no interest in putting 12,000 studs on bricks, like, at all right now, so until I find myself interested in doing so, there simply won't be a review. It's not about getting them for free. I've spent $600 on mosaics. If I had just invested that in Bitcoin, I'd probably have $10,000 right now. The Bricklord1 says, what do you think the mystery $30 set will be for the Summer Wave? Could it possibly be another Super Battle Pack or could it just be something like Obi-Wan's Jedi Interceptor? Now, Obi-Wan's Jedi Interceptor would be interesting like as a duo with the Anakin's Interceptor. Like that would just make sense to have both of them since they're both in the same scene to start the same movie. Be neat. It's not happening. Neither is Super Battle Pack. Neither of those things are happening for LEGO Star Wars this year. I'm not gonna say what the $30 set is. I'm waiting for someone else to say it essentially at this point, but it's neither of those. Keep guessing though. Rahan says, do you like Cheetos? Um, I mean, I guess, but you know what's better than Cheetos? A big barrel of cheese balls. Cheese balls are way better than Cheetos. Why would you eat Cheetos like ever? Like they're the same thing, but they're not. Like if you're gonna eat like a aerated puffy thing with cheese on it, cheese balls, Cheetos. Cheese balls like every time, bro. Chesky says, can we get another room tour? So. I have, I've like had this question a lot in like comments as the year has gone on and my answer on this has been a steadfast no, we cannot get another room tour because nothing's really changed. There's nothing to like update you on in my room. My bed's still in the same place. My shelves are still in the same place. Like nothing's happening. However, I will do a um, like final room tour. Like the next room tour I do will be my last, if that makes sense. Because the next time I do a room tour, I'm gonna do it like right before I move to a house. Hence, I will no longer just have a room. I will have a house to do a tour of, essentially. So, um, yeah, it'll be my last room tour, and I'm kind of excited about that. I've been thinking of that. Like, that'll be, like, the way I would announce that sort of thing. So, the next time you see a room tour from me, it'll be my last, but for a dang good reason. William2004 says, will you be putting your 2021 summer rumor video back up now that you're out of land? I love that video, and I'm sure a lot of other people did, too. Oh, yeah, a lot of other people did love that video. I loved it, too. However, comma, um, I don't think I'm going to do that. I, I just... I don't think it's worth putting back up at this point. Um, I still find myself upset that they asked me to take it down and said they were gonna ask other people to take theirs down and then didn't. So that's still a, just an absolute massive head scratcher to me. It's one of the many reasons I was upset and wanted to leave. I'll do an updated rumor video here soon. I don't know when, just like within the next couple months before pictures get revealed, but I'll do kind of an all encompassing good, bad and unknown style video, I'm sure, cause I usually like doing those. LegoFan33 says, what are your top five things you want to do in the next few months. I like this one and I would like to revisit it in a few months if I can remember. And with these next three months, I think so one of the, the five things we'll pick is that I want to find my consistency again. I want to be uploading five times a week on Aminar 
once a week on MNR Collects, once a week on MNR Vlogs, and multiple times a week. I don't know exactly how many on uh, MNR Games, and then doing the Bad Burks podcast consistently every week as well. Like, that's what I want to do. In three months, I want to be looking back at these next three months, essentially, and saying, oh, I didn't miss a beat. I didn't miss one day, didn't miss one thing. And I, that's something I want to do or want to get out of the next three months of my life. Now, this one's a little bit like, I'm not going to be able to like find out the exact answer to this within the next three months, I would say, but I want to get like a source for Lego Star Wars sets early, like a sponsored source that isn't LAN, whether that's Lego marketing themselves or something else from a different retailer. Like I'm sure I'm at a point where I can do that and I just need to find the right person to make the connection. And so that's another thing I wanna get done within the next few months because that's something that would be good for my channel just in general. However, you guys wouldn't see the result of that in the next few months. That's just a private thing I'll be working on, but that's something I want to like get done. I kind of lump this one in with the consistency thing for videos, but I think it's different is like actually going to the gym on a consistent basis as well. Like for two weeks, I'll go like three or four days a week. And then like, I won't go for another month because I'll just like get busy or whatever. That's another thing I definitely want to get done. Um, fixing my sleep schedule. I feel like this is kind of like a throw in, but you, like, it would be nice to not wake up at 2 p.m. most days. I mean, obviously you're probably watching this. Oh, you're lucky you get to wake up at 2 p.m. Look, it doesn't feel great to wake up at 2 p.m. every day. Let me tell you, it does feel great when you wake up at 8 a.m. and you have a great productive morning. That feels great. Waking up at 2 p.m., I feel like, oh, the day's over. Like, genuinely, it's not as good as it sounds. And I guess my fifth thing I would say is just sell some of my extra Lego that I have sitting around. Like, I just have a lot of stuff that's taking up a lot of space that I don't necessarily want to keep. Like, a bunch of Lego City sets I bought I don't want to keep, and I didn't even end up making a video with them. And I just, I just don't want it. It's taking up space. It's annoying. It's got to go. So I also want to sell a considerable amount of things just to kind of clear a little bit of the clutter, although it will hardly make a dent. I'm sure it would just be nice for my peace of mind to have a little bit of extra space. Base, I'm sure we'll see back in uh, mid June I'm sure and see what's happened with most of these I'm sure I won't be able to fulfill them but that's what I would like to do so it's worth something we have a pretty good one here from Linux. He says, I need advice. Is a $600 UCS Imperial Star Destroyer worth a four hour drive in one day, or should I drive an hour for the $700 retail set? I already made a 10 hour drive for a UCS Falcon this past weekend. I'll be making the drive this next Monday. Thanks in advance. So option one is drive four hours and buy it and save $100. Option two is drive one hour and get it for $700. And I, I'm gonna add a third option for you. And I'll also put my affiliate link in the description below. You can literally buy this set on Lego.com right now it's available in stock full retail price so if you end up like thinking you should just drive an hour for it why would you even drive an hour for it when you can buy it online for the exact same price especially if you're just in no hurry to get it like if it's a day one purchase i can understand but you could just order online right now and it would just show up to your door for the same price if it was option two now with option one here where you're going to drive four hours to potentially save a hundred dollars i don't think that's quite as cut and dry as you may think it is because let's call gas three dollars a gallon let's say you have to drive 250 miles and let's say your car gets 25 miles a gallon. Well, that's 10 gallons of gas to go and get this set, which is gonna cost you 30 bucks. And so now all of a sudden you're only saving $70 for four hours of your time. I don't think I would drive four hours to save $70 on something like that. You're already spending an amount of money where $70 just isn't like the end of the world to not save and just get it online and not have to go through the hassle of stress and driving four hours and it just doesn't seem like it's worth your time and you could definitely and, and ideally if you decide not to drive four hours to save seventy dollars um you would spend your time better and like do something productive that's going to make you more money than you would have uh saved otherwise which would amount to about seventeen and a half dollars an hour for you so if you can do something more productive with your time do it. If not, maybe it's worth your time. Maybe it's a fun adventure. Maybe you enjoy that sort of thing. But remember, the cost involved is still 30 bucks of gas, so you're down to 70. And at that, you get the LEGO VIP program, so you get, what, $35 back from that, too? So it's even more negligible, the difference? Like, I just, just don't think it's worth it. Maybe even a LEGO promo cuts into that even more. So... You know, it's it's not as worth it as I think you think it is, and you shouldn't do it. Astro Cat says you should re-upload slash unprivate your old videos. Oh, quite the contrary, my friend. I'm gonna be. I don't have a lot of private old videos actually um, on this channel, MNR Productions, but I'm actually gonna be making more videos private here in the future. 
And trust me, they're not videos you're going to miss. It's like Lego Batman movie polybag review that has 700 views from five years ago. Like, you don't care about it. Trust me, it's it's not the good ones. And I have some rationale for this. I actually uh, kind of test ran it on my vlog channel recently. And my vlog channel, I didn't start making what I would consider to be like modern style content for that channel for what I do modern style until like the beginning of 2018. And so I had like this backlog of content from like 2013 to 2017 or something that was just kind of like these random videos from time of time that were just like really, really bad. Trust me, they were awful. And so I uh, took them and privated all of them. And so what I noticed when I did this is that it really helped my click-through rate on that channel. And click-through rate is something that you wanna have be as high as possible essentially because it means that someone saw your video and clicked on it. And so in privating those videos, the click-through rate on that channel went up. And thus I think like on the whole, it can help make your channel just perform better. And so from an analytical side of things, I think it's in my best interest to make some of these older videos that just aren't getting any views ever private because their click-through rate is really poor and it's just hurting like my channel on the whole to have a lower click-through rate I think that's just my theory and even if it's not like what are these videos doing for me other than just kind of bogging down okay I think I've thought of a better way to explain it essentially like if YouTube was going to suggest you the viewer one of my videos and it suggested one of these videos that has like a 1% click-through rate because it's old it's trash nobody cares about it, it's irrelevant and so so you're not going to click on this video like there's not a chance you're going to maybe obviously there's a chance 1% but very low likelihood you're going to click on this video it's just bad for my channel if you get recommended that video and so instead if I made all of those videos prior private that were previously getting recommended and not performing well because they aren't good, uh, quite frankly. Um, and instead, now YouTube is forced, essentially, if it was going to recommend an MNR Productions video, to recommend a subjectively better one, but objectively performing better as far as click-through rate goes. Let's say it's a 5 or 6% click-through rate video. All of a sudden, I've multiplied my performance in the, the YouTube search algorithm by 5 or 6 times. Now, I don't think it's as straightforward as that, but I think on some level, it's going to just help not have bad videos pulling down the good ones if that makes any sense to anyone hopefully it does like i'm not gonna make like any ask an ours private or anything like anything like that there's just a bunch of old really bad just videos that don't matter on my channel like are we really gonna be losing anything if i make my lego friends snowboard tricks review private i don't really think so I think we'll be okay. Ronnie says, hey Ryan, but a fan for three years, love all the content. Thank you, Ronnie. Even though I know you don't love all the content. I know you didn't love that Lego Friends review. You don't have to lie to me. My question is, why do some UCS sets seem to have longer shelf lives than other? Feels like the UCS Falcon has been a long time. Four years, I believe, while others seem to retire in two years or less. Well, it seems like that because it is like that. If a set's selling really well, Lego's not gonna retire it. Most sets, like when they first come out, um, under what I'm under the impression of is like they're they're they'll have like a set lifespan that Lego expects them to go for and in select cases and this is mostly seen with these UCS sets they'll expand that depending on how well the set is performing sales wise so like sets like the UCS Death Star when they came out you know maybe they were only gonna sell it for three years originally oh but hey this is one of our best-selling sets let's just sell it for seven years because people are still buying it there's no reason to retire it so same is going for the UCS Falcon right now where you're seeing it in action it's a perennial bestseller and there's just no reason for them to retire it like with other sets like the Cloud City Betrayal of Cloud City set like they retired that after a year and a half because it just wasn't selling super well compared to other things so there was no reason for them to keep it around plus they sometimes have to retire things based on what they're able to produce for certain things like there are other reasons to retire things other than just sales performance but yeah especially with these UCS sets if they're selling super well they just are more likely to extend their lifespan and you're seeing that in action here it's not abnormal I would say Cress Pie says to follow up on the minifigure packs rumor slash potential, would you prefer a minifigure pack that has unique characters like a file first that has hard case Jesse kicks and top? Or would you prefer a more traditional army builder pack? I would love both. Like I think ideally in a in a perfect world they're making all sorts of character packs like this, like the minifigure packs, and and you can just have everything, right? And I don't see why you can't. Like I don't see why you can't at the same time simultaneously release like two file first packs, one that has a bunch of name characters and one that is kind of like an army builder type of thing. Like if you're gonna do that, same with like two twelfth or you know different clone legions or clone trooper style boxes or packs and like there are a ton of possibilities they can do with that and so I don't really have a preference there. I do prefer that they aren't necessarily mixed though. Like I don't, like it, it, it's the problem with the battle packs is, is when they did the Jedi battle pack, right? You get two Jedi and then two clone troopers. Like, well, a bunch of people want to buy this for the clone troopers, but then you end up with 50 Kiati Mundis. Nobody liked that, like period, end of story. So ideally you keep them separate, 
but you can still have both. And that I think is the perfect way to make everybody happy. So people that want to army build can army build in peace and people that want named characters are still going to get their named characters because I want both things. Like, of course I love named characters, who doesn't? And I also like the army building aspect of things. I just don't want those two things meshed together. Helmet Collector Production says, why are Republic Bricks so expensive? Well, the answer to your question does not lie with Republic Bricks necessarily. So Timmy runs Republic Bricks and it's a custom Lego Star Wars company essentially and they make custom models of gunships and Republic dropships and they are subjectively expensive. However, that's gonna be true of any custom model maker because you're buying used parts and new parts from third party dealers from Lego, like like indirectly from Lego. And, and so these things get expensive. Like for example, I found on brickmania.com a taxi with 161 Lego pieces for $90. Like that's just expensive compared to a Lego set, but that's relatively normal in the world of custom sets. It's not a Republic Bricks thing. I know I cover a lot of Republic Bricks on the channel as like the main custom company I'll take a look at products for, but for those unaware, there are a lot of other custom um, businesses that make models and they are all relatively expensive like Republic Bricks compared to actual Lego because it's literally impossible to compete with Lego sets themselves because Lego has mass production and they are the supplier of their own goods. They determine the price and then from there the custom sets are going to be inflated X amount based on whatever work and stuff goes into that sort of thing. Darth Vader 213 says, what are your thoughts on the Lego Space Shuttle Discovery set? This is one I'm really excited for because I had for years and years, and I still might do it because I still think it's, um, I, I like that it has the fuel tank. Uh, the, the older shuttle, I'd been wanting to buy the older space shuttle set from like 2010 for years and I just never did and it's like $500 sealed. And so this one coming out makes me still wanna buy it because I wanna do a comparison video, but I still am definitely gonna go buy this on day one, April 1st is the release date for 200 bucks. And it looks great. It comes with the Hubble telescope. It's the, the space shuttle discovery, I think. And I was actually a little taken aback by how dang near studless the model is. I mean, it's really close to having no studs on the exterior of the, uh, I wanna call it a ship, but the shuttle itself. It's got a Star Wars style UCS plaque. It's got a great looking like rounded off stand, almost like uncomfortably round stand. I don't know what it is. Like like the Star Wars ones are usually pretty sharp and determined and this was just like kind of ovalish and I find that a little bit awkward compared to what I'm used to looking at. But yeah, the shuttle looks great. It's got great functionality to it where you can open up the uh, docking bay or what the loading bay or whatever it is and like release the Hubble telescope out into space. And I just think it's a really fun display set. I'm very excited about this one. As someone who lives right next to, like I'm 40 minutes away from NASA where they used to launch the space shuttles up until like 2011 or 20, whenever they stopped that program. And uh, yeah, it's just a really exciting set to me. I would I need to go back to the Kennedy Space Center. It's right there. Piggybacking off this, Jason's question here, he says, uh, uh, that the new space shuttle here has some shiny pieces and he wants to know if I think this could in a new way bring back the chrome look for the Naboo Starfighter. This is brilliant. I really like this idea and I really hope that Lego does this. Like it would be really cool the next time they do a Naboo Starfighter if they do it as an 18 plus style set. Not quite like like a UCS style set, kind of like the original one. I, I'm pointing to it, but you can't see it. Like the original UCS one essentially, but like as a really cool looking display model in that scaled down version for like 50 or $60, that would be great. Like why not? Not. Why not? That's the only question I have at this point. Like, I, w I would love to see that. So I like your idea, Jason, and I hope that Lego can can kind of capitalize on that because I think it does look really good and it could translate very well to a Lego Star Wars Naboo Starfighter that isn't necessarily a playset, but more of a display set. Swift Wig says, do you think that there is a point in Lego minifig printing where it becomes too realistic and loses its Lego look? Not really because the Lego character doesn't look realistic. Like it's just a caricature of a human essentially, but not like even really close to humanoid. Like, you know, the proportions of it just aren't there to make it like look realistic enough. Like if it was like curved body and everything, maybe you could get somewhere, but I just don't think so. And it, it doesn't happen unless you do sculpting like they do with like custom minifigs, like Michael MGF does some really good ones that do kind of get to that line where it's like, hey, you know, this is starting to look pretty realistic, but Lego figures themselves with printing alone and no sculpting or anything. It's just never gonna really get close to that point. Anyway, guys, that is it for Ask Emanar episode 167. If you guys enjoyed, hit that like button. If you do the channel, make sure you subscribe subscribe. Thank you very much. Also, by the way, for 350,000 subscribers, that's a high number. I never even got to write to, the, like when I was little, I had a notebook and I tried to write as many numbers as I could, like in order. And I never got that high. That being said, I probably didn't get much past hundred. Anyway, follow me on TikTok, MNR Productions. I've been killing it over there too. It's a lot of fun. Thank you for watching. Deuces. <laughs>